Welcome everyone to a new update. Today we'll be covering everything you need to know about the recent event of Tornado Cash and stablecoins. But before we're going to continue, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel beneath and also like this YouTube update if you enjoy the content. Last week we have been posting the first two YouTube videos and we were live during the entire week in the mornings at 10 a.m. From next week on we're expecting to be providing videos on a daily basis again. If you like what we do, we've got our trade letter and recently added premium membership which both can be tested for one week for free. The links in the description gives you all the information you need to join for free. In today's video we'll be covering everything you need to know about Tornado Cash and stablecoins which is a topic which got the spotlight a few weeks ago. We'll be talking about the recent events surrounding Tornado Cash and more in which we'll start with the Tornado Cash crisis and why the OFAC sanctioned Tornado Cash contracts. Then we'll discuss the importance of the USDC freeze and then we'll focus on centralized and decentralized stablecoins. After that We'll finish off with LUSD and Aave, but first we'll jump towards the Tornado Cash crisis. Through Tornado Cash, the on-chain link between the sender and recipient's address is broken and transaction privacy is improved. Its code is designed to mix a user's crypto with a pool of other Tornado Cash user's crypto in a smart contract, making it harder to track. Increasing crypto incidents have made Tornado Cash more popular. Privacy was the primarily goal of Tornado Cash, but unfortunately, Tornado Cash has become the public service for hackers and crypto thieves, but its creators say it's merely a privacy tool they can't control. The smart contracts work independently because developers permanently burn their cryptographic keys, even as they attempt to implement some form of compliance with the US sanctions regime. But what did happen in the past weeks with Tornado Cash? The US Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control sanctioned Tornado Cash for enabling cybercriminals to launder 7 billion in crypto since 2019. According to OVAX press release, the Lazarus Group, a Democratic People's Republic of Korea state-sponsored hacking group, laundered over 455 million in stolen funds through the mixer. The Lazarus Group, sanctioned by the US in 2019, is the largest known virtual currency heist to date. The Lazarus Group commonly uses virtual currency mixing services in crypto heists to help fund North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile programs. After the sanction, one of the co-founders of Tornado Cash, Roman Semenov, reported that his account was suspended on GitHub. A GitHub account that previously hosted code tied to Tornado Cash returned a page not found error, as did the website linked to the project. GitHub also disables emails related to Tornado Cash. The cryptocurrency community was not expecting those fast and severe restraints for writing open source code. After the GitHub suspension, another surprise came from Circle's USDC. Circle, the issuer of the USDC, froze over 75,000 USDC word of funds linked to the Tornado Cash addresses sanctioned by the OVAC. Vitalik Buterin also said that he used Tornado Cash to make donations for Ukraine. If you have deposited ETH in a Tornado Cash contract, you can withdraw the ETH to any other wallet if you know the address and that wallet automatically gets blacklisted. It is named Dusting Attack if you send a small amount of cryptocurrency to many wallets for blacklisting the wallet owners. Blacklisting wallets does happen quite often, especially if you are having malicious transactions or when you have been using your crypto on the dark web, then your wallet gets blacklisted on exchanges as well. Some people also started to send 0.1e to famous celebrities and entities. You can see some famous names who are interested in crypto. They were easy to target because the addresses are publicly known, so anyone can send any coin to their address. Justin Sun was the next victim. He announced that Aave had blocked him because someone sent 0.1 ETH from the Tornado Cash contract to him. After the tweet, the Aave team noted that they recently integrated API to the platform, which helps identify wallets that interact with Tornado Cash. However, the API made incorrect calls and blocked wallets that received ETH from the mixer contracts without consent. In the end, the Aave team said the issue had been resolved and Justin Sun and other users regained access to their accounts. 
It is important to note that at the moment users can still access the wallet using an alternative front end as the dApps have blocked only access to its front end. However, it is still unclear whether the DeFi platforms would ban these addresses at the smart contract level. While everything happened quickly, soon after we had huge news from the Netherlands. On August 10, the field announced that they have arrested a 29-year-old developer Alexei Pertsev of Tornado Cash. However, there is no clarity on the arrest and the field refuses to say what charges are alleged against the developer. We will likely see more news about Tornado Cash sanctions because all US persons and entities have been banned from using the tool or any Ethereum wallet addresses tied to the protocol. Penalties for violating sanctions range from 50k to 10 million and 10 to 30 years imprisonment. Nobody will ever want to face that situation. Because of the strong penalties, US-based companies reacted quickly to the sanctions. Nevertheless, USDC was one of them. It has a key role in the crypto ecosystem. Stablecoins are a very big element of the crypto ecosystem. In the list of the 10 largest market cap crypto coins, we have three stablecoins. The USDC freeze issue is not the first problem the crypto community faced in the past. It published that the USDT froze some private addresses in the past and we've got the recent fear of USD crashing and dying down due to the entire crash of Luna. The main danger is that the largest stablecoins are centralized, so they must obey the US regulators' decisions and sanctions as soon as possible. Many people mainly use stablecoins to feel safe and wait in cash. Besides that, they are widely used in DeFi platforms like Aave and Curve, the fundamental problem of stablecoins will cause a significant fear in the community because of the massive usage in the crypto market. USDT, USDC and DAI totally have a market cap of 150 billion, which is massive considering Bitcoin's market cap of 410 billion. Centralized stablecoins are fiat collateralized off-chain. These stablecoins are usually connected with a third-party custodian like a bank. In centralized stablecoins, stability is achieved via the one-to-one -one backing of tokens liabilities with the corresponding asset. All the largest three stablecoins are centralized, USDT, USDC and BUSD. After the USDC freeze on sanctions wallet, the future of stablecoins started to be questioned, because it showed the strength of the US government sanctions power to all crypto communities. Stablecoin holders realized if the US wanted, all the centralized stablecoins would obey the instruction and freeze the assets. As you can see, the top three stablecoins are being used in more than 49 chains now. Now we'll jump towards decentralized stablecoins. As you can see in the pie chart, DAI is backed by 52.6% USDC and 5.6% USDP, which are centralized stablecoins. After the USDC freeze, MakerDAO founder Rune Christensen has urged members of the decentralized autonomous organization to seriously consider preparing for the DPAC of its DAI stablecoin from the United States dollar. Even the problem is not limited to centralized stablecoins. DAI and FRUX are the largest decentralized coins. Unfortunately, they are mostly backed by centralized stablecoins. After that news, the founder of Ethereum said it was a risky and terrible idea on Twitter. Following that speech, Rune took a step back and wrote in Discord that it would be suicide to all in ETH, but stated that the community should seriously consider it and be ready for consequences of it. Frux is the second largest on-chain stablecoin after DAI, and the situation is very similar to the DAI because the decentralization ratio is only 18% is mainly backed by USDC, which is a centralized stablecoin. DAI and Frux were announced as decentralized stablecoins in crypto, although when it is researched, you can easily realize both are also primarily backed by centralized stablecoins. After the sanction, it is clear that decentralized stablecoins backed by centralized coins are also at risk of an asset freeze. Then people started to search for decentralized stablecoins backed by decentralized assets. A few candidates can benefit from the influence of real decentralization and if a stablecoin is backed by a decentralized asset like Bitcoin or ETH, there should be no fear of sanctions of asset freeze. LUSD is one of them. In the end, a critical question started to be asked in crypto. Is there any stablecoin which is not backed by a centralized asset? 
LUSD is a very good candidate for a completely decentralized stablecoin because liquidity contracts have no admin keys and will be accessible via multiple interfaces hosted by different front-end operators. Liquidity is a decentralized borrowing protocol that allows you to draw interest-free loans against Ethereum used as collateral. Loans are paid out in LUSD and must maintain a minimal collateral ratio of 110%. There are five key benefits of using liquidity. You don't need to pay any interest for your borrowings. You need to have minimum 110% ETH collateral, which is the only metric you must observe. All operations are algorithmic and fully automated, so basically governance-free contract deployment. LUSD can be redeemed at face value for the underlying collateral at any time. Liquidity contracts have no admin keys and will be accessible via multiple interfaces hosted by different front-end operators. LUSD total collateral ratio is 284%, which seems safe. However, a hard devaluation risk of ETH is always a danger. The usage of LUSD in DeFi is also increasing thanks to Convex and Curve. Therefore, LUSD is a good option for people that want to use fully decentralized and risk-free from being blacklisted by the stablecoin issuer company. We might see an increasing demand and market cap for LUSD if we expect more liquidity movement from centralized to decentralized stablecoins after the sanctions. However, Aave has been working on a new stablecoin as well, which we'll be discussing next. The Aave community in the form of Aave companies has put together a new proposal to introduce support for a different digital asset. More specifically, that new asset would be a stablecoin GHO to help improve various key features of Aave's lending platforms. Following the successful proposal, GHO will be offered to Aave users by minting it against the supplied collateral. Users can mint $1 of GHO by supplying their Aave collateral. There will be a dedicated collateralization ratio to acquire GHO, although those details remain unclear now. In addition, if a user repays their borrow position or faces liquidation, the protocol will automatically burn their user's GHO balance. Tornado Cash was a mixer service on Ethereum to create privacy. The sanction was unexpected and surprising for crypto space on contract level. Before understanding the situation, the GitHub ban, UCC freeze, Aave front-end ban and the arrest of the developer of Tornado Cash hit rapidly. The action of freezing the USDC in wallets interacting with Tornado Cash was a serious move and proved the power of the OVAC sanctions. Then people started questioning decentralized stablecoins and how they can improve the decentralized stablecoins as they are, like DAI and FRUX. There is a truly decentralized stablecoin like LUSD in the market which does not have admin keys. However, it is not easy to use for individuals and the market cap is very low compared to centralized stablecoins. DeFi opportunities for decentralized stablecoins like LUSD should also be improved for actual adoption. After all of these, an important question started to be asked in the crypto community. Is it possible to censor Ethereum at the protocol level? The Ethereum protocol is the technology dictating whether transactions get propagated out to the rest of the network has not been censored at all right now. If a US citizen wants to shuffle money through Tornado Cash, Miners will still add the transactions to blocks and propagate them out to the broader network. After all, there's no evidence from validators that they will indeed censor transactions. It's not even clear that governments would require them to do so. However, this tweet raises important questions about the influence that states could theoretically have over a blockchain the more centralized its validators set. In the end, lots of progress has been made and still a ton will need to be made to have a truly Web 3.0 functional ecosystem that we all want to have. In the next few months, we'll definitely keep you updated on the fundamental progress of this ecosystem. Thanks for watching to this uh, update on Tornado Cash and Stablecoins. Make sure to hit that like button and also make sure to subscribe beneath to this YouTube channel and stay tuned on the latest content. Finally, sign up to our trade letter and premium membership, which both can be tested for free for one week. Stay calm and patient and I'll see you again coming week in the live streams and the YouTube videos. Ciao!